Suppose two events A and B are mutually exclusive with the probability of event A not being zero and the probability of event B not being zero either. By working through the following steps, you'll see why two mutually exclusive events are not independent. For mutually exclusive events, can event A occur if event B has occurred? No, mutually exclusive events cannot occur together. What is the value of probability of event A occurring given that event B has already occurred? By definition, probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B occurring divided by the probability of B. Since these events are mutually exclusive, the probability of both occurring at the same time is zero. probability of B is not zero, so it's just some random number, but we get zero overall for the probability. Using the information from part A, can you conclude that events A and B are not independent if they are mutually exclusive? Explain. Yes, because the probability of A given B is not equal to the probability of A. The events A and B are not independent. An example of a mutually exclusive event is when a coin is tossed and there are two events that can occur. Either it will be a head or a tail. You can't have both. Hence, both the events here are mutually exclusive. But if we take two separate coins and flip them, then the occurrence of head or tail on both the coins are independent to each other. Number two, consider the following events for a college student selected at random. Event A, a student is female. Event B, a student is majoring in business. Translate each of the following phrases into symbols. Okay, now from the probability video, we also learned complements, which are opposites. So a complement would be student is male. And B complement student is not majoring in business. Part A, the probability the student is male or is majoring in business. Male or, and we use the union symbol for or, you can also just write the word or and, let's see, or majoring in business, that's event B. Actually, I'm going to write it both ways, and that way you can pick which one you prefer. So it's a probability of A complement or B. Part B, the probability a female student is majoring in business. Okay. This one, we want to know the probability that 
we have a female student who is majoring in business. This is the same as the probability of a student majoring in business given the fact that they are female. Part C, the probability a business major is female. This is just the opposite statement. We're looking for the probability that we have a female given that they are a business major. Part D, the probability the student is female and intersection for and not majoring in business. You can also use the word and instead of the intersection symbol. So that's a probability of event A and B complement occurring. And then finally, part E, the probability the student is female and is majoring in business. And so that's the probability of A and B. Okay, so again, feel free to use the union or intersection, or you can use the words or, or, and freely. M&M plain candies come in various colors. According to the M&M Mars De Department of Consumer Affairs, the distribution of colors for plain M&M candies is as follows. So we have a table with the various colors and the percentages of those that show up. Suppose you have a large bag of plain M&M candies and you choose one candy at random. We're going to find the probability of selecting a green candy or a blue candy. The conjunction or gives us a plus sign. We're going to add these two events. So probability of green or blue I got to be careful there because there's also brown. Now, because you can't pick both green and blue at the same time, we don't have to subtract any of the overlap. We just simply add these two together. Green, 9%. Blue is 10%. So our probability is 19%, which is 0 0.19. Are these outcomes mutually exclusive? Yes, choosing a green and blue M&M is not possible because you, remember, you're only going to choose one candy at random. That's the, that's the catch. Part B. The probability of a yellow candy or a red candy, same situation. The conjunction or tells us to add. So we're gonna look at the probability of yellow plus the probability of red. Drawing only one candy out of the bag, we cannot do both at the same time. So that's gonna be 18% plus 23%. for a total of 41%. Remember probability is zero to one inclusive, so that's 0.41 as a probability. Are these outcomes mutually exclusive? Yes, choosing a yellow and red M&M is not possible when you're only allowed to pull out one candy. 
Find the probability of not purple. The probability of not purple. So that's purple complement. Now anytime you have a complement and you also have all the events sample space covered because all the data represents 100%, you can subtract that one event from one. Or you could simply add up the percentages from all the others. Okay, so purple carries a 23% chance. Which gives us a 77% chance of picking any other color. A recent study gave the information shown in the table about ages of children receiving toys. The percentages represent all toys sold. What is the probability a toy is purchased for someone in the following age ranges? Part A, six years old or older. Because these ages do not overlap, they are all considered mutually exclusive from one another. So six years or older would be the sum of the bottom three rows. I'm gonna write them as probabilities instead of percentages and get a grand total. What is the sum of those? Let's look. 0.26 plus 0.14 plus 0.25, I get 0 0.65. So there's a 65% chance that a toy is purchased for someone six or older. 12 years old or younger would be the top four. So we're gonna have 18% plus 17% plus 26%, plus 14%. Now because every category except the bottom one is covered, you could also calculate this as one minus 0.25, either way. If we add up the probabilities for the top four age groups, we should get 75. 0.75 to be exact. And let me verify that. 0.18 plus 0.17 plus 0.26 plus 0.14 does in fact come out to 0.75. Part C, between 6 and 12, that's going to be the sum of rows 3 and 4. rows three and four. Okay, so let's see, I can do that mentally, I believe that's gonna be point 40. And then part D between three and nine, that's rows two and three. Part E, a child between 10 and 12 years old looks at this probability distribution and asks, why are, more, why are people more likely to buy toys for kids older than I am, which would be 13 and over, than for kids in my age group, 10 to 12? How would you respond? One possible answer would be that the category of 13 and older would include more children and up to 17 or 18 years old, and it's also a larger category, so it covers a lot more broad of a spectrum than just 10 to 12. You have a lot more age groups that can fall into this one.